Okay, and this is the second part of the psychodynamic psychoanalytic approach to personality. Okay, and this is I want to create a little subtopic of modern psychodynamic views on, but you could still keep it as psychoanalytic psychodynamic at the top. Okay, so neo Freudians, neo Freudians are basically basically people that are psychoanalytic slash psychodynamic, same thing more of the psychodynamic um, and they're going to use some of Freud's concepts that they agree with and others they're like eh, maybe not so much because he had some weird stuff uh, thoughts okay so neo-freudians basically they accepted Freud's basic ideas and this is what we're writing down and they believe that the personality structures of the id ego and superego um, they believe the importance of the consciousness um, as well as the shaping of the personality based on your childhood. And then also this dynamics of anxiety and defense mechanisms. What they did not um, agree on, which, which was they do not agree on like, okay, because Freud said that the conscious mind is really irrelevant. It's kind of like a side thing on the side that's not really that important. However, neo Freudians do believe that the conscious mind plays a big role in interpreting our experiences as well as coping with the environment. Okay, and then there's also this whole the sexual phases of how we develop personality based on Freud, which we're not even going to get into because they don't even are not teaching that anymore. <laughs> so it's one of those things like a really old. Um, anyway, so one of the people you need to know is Alfred Adler. He is one of the psychodynamic um people and he believed that much of our behavior is driven by our efforts to con conquer childhood inferiority feelings so his is all about inferiority feelings that then trigger our our trigger us to strive for superiority and power so make sure to write that down he also developed this approach called individual psychology which basically was motivated by purpose and our goals and that everyone is striving for superiority by seeking to adapt, improve and master our environment. OK, then next bullet under him is that we also have he created this word called compensation and compensation is our attempt to overcome Im images or real inferiorities or i'm sorry overcome imagined or real inferiorities or weaknesses by developing one's own abilities okay so we're just basically trying to compensate for what we believe is um inferior or our weakness that we have in order to achieve <clears throat> our our own abilities and he had this called which develops then what's called the inferiority complex or, or not, or, and <laughs> overcompensation. Okay. So inferiority complex is basically these, ha these hidden feelings of feeling inferior by then flaunting superficial indicators of superiority, such as wealth, status, or good looks. So these are people that tend to, when we have an inferiority complex, they tend to then overcompensate, which is basically flaunting, typically something superficial to show their weakness. So people that feel um, really inferior or have a weakness, they may overcompensate by, you know, buying really luxurious goods or, you know, cars or clothing or posting on social media, certain things. So that can be a possibility of why some people would post or, you know, behave a certain way. Okay. So he's all about uh, that inferiority complex or compensating. So those are keywords with Alfred Adler. Okay. Then we have the next neo Freudian, which is Karen Hornet. And Karen is, she basically said that our childhood anxiety triggers our desire for love and security and, and is our prime motive. Okay. 
Next one, Globe Bullet under Karen. She is going to be very much about the view of women, women like masculine and feminine roles. Um, <clears throat> and she's going to attempt to balance these biases um, of the more masculine role that um, it plays in psychology. Um, she also is going to consider the social cultural influence on personality. Um, and that she also has what's called the Electra complex, which is, and we'll talk a little bit more in the class because it's really not a huge significance in this class, but it's basically that both sexes, male and female, envy attributes of one another, okay? Because Freud said that the woman, that the female is jealous of the male and she's like, no, they both are kind of the they envy attributes of both okay all right and the big guy under psychodynamic is carl jung carl jung is going to be he's big in this unit and in psychology now they're kind of bringing back a lot of the things that he's been um that he studied so keep that in mind because there's always that in there and i'll put this in box because that's a little side note i want you to write okay so carl jung who was he so he says that our unconscious contains more than our repressed thoughts and feelings and that our unconscious is divided into two parts make sure to write this down it's called our personal unconsciousness okay which is our personal unconscious is all repressed thoughts memories and emotions okay that's our personal unconscious. Then we have a collective unconscious, which is a shared sense of universal experience common to all human beings, okay? And this universal memories are organized into archetypes, okay? So it's basically saying that our, our unconscious is kind of our own personal um like memories and experiences and then the collective unconscious is that kind of everybody has this idea um it goes a lot into the symbolic things that we know under the archetypes and archetypes are exactly that now under the collective unconsciousness these are are a their common images or archetypes that it's a universal experience Okay, now an archetype is an idea and images that have rich and symbolic meaning for all people. And this could be seen in art, literature, religion, dreams. And these are just things, symbolisms or symbolic images or words that we all associate with something. Okay, so some examples are, um, we have, hold on, <laughs> trying to. Like if there's the archetype of shadow and shadows typically represent evil or the dark side of human nature. So there's parts of us that we all can see in that shadow, right? Um, there's also this archetype of the anima, which anima is more of these, the feminine side, more a passive feminine side of like your personality. And then the animus, I want to write this all down is more of the assertive masculine side of things. So <clears throat> these archetypes, we all kind of have them. It's a universal thing. And then that, according to Carl Jung, can affect the way our personalities are developed because of the unconsciousness. Okay. It's kind of like a mix of both our personal and this universal collective unconsciousness. Okay. Um, and he also, little side note, is that he did start this, um, he invented the words that extrovert and introvert. And extrovert are just basically people that tend to be more, I wouldn't say outgoing, but like to live out in the out, right? Like they're constantly seeking the outside environment. Introverts tend to internalize a little bit more, okay? Um, and tend to, does it mean that they don't socialize? It's just some more of an internal thing. All right. 
And then last but not least is assessing the unconsciousness. And the way that they assess the unconscious, these different types of tests, they're called projective tests. And projective tests are the, and you'll see this word a lot, projective test is where the test taker is given an ambiguous stimulus, right? or they have to tell a story and to tell a story and an ambiguous stimulus is just something that really has no meaning it's just kind of like a picture and i'll show you some examples um and then they have to tell a story about it and then according to the psychodynamic this is where then they will start um they'll be able to go into their unconscious their deep dark you know not dark but their deep thoughts that are not in the conscious mind Okay, and the first type of projective test you need to know is called the thematic apperception test or the Tate. And this is where the person is given a bunch of different uh, ambiguous pictures and images, and then they tell them to make up a story about that image or that picture. And this, they tend to, um, will give them like their hopes, their desires, their fears are projected onto these images and every picture actually represents a different side of your unconscious or different topics okay and then which let me show you what it looks like it looks something like this right this would be the tape these are both um from the tat the thematic apperception test and they all like will represent something so they'll tell them okay like well tell me a story of what happened here, like what happened before, during, or after, okay? And then they'll tell the story, and then the t the evaluator will then perceive and make a perception of what it means, right? There are some guides behind the tape, um, so it's not just like, oh, whatever, I feel like it, okay? Um, but again, it does lead to interpretation, which is what there's some controversy with these tests. Um, and the Rorschach ink block test, which is basically a series of ink blocks. I'm not even sure that they still use this as often. Um, it's really hard, and this is the controversy with this test, is the validity of it, right? It being like the prediction, being able to predict the results are the same all the time is really hard because this is all about the perception of the scorekeeper um and this is just basically it looks like this they'll give you a couple ink blocks um really have no meaning and then they'll ask them like tell me what is this what is this and what does it mean and so forth okay um all right and now more of modern unconscious mind and so modern psycho psychologists think of the unconscious as an information processing that occurs without awareness and so they also have what's called the false consensus effect we've talked about this before and this is where our tendency to overestimate the extent to which others share our beliefs and our behaviors and this is where projection that defense mechanism of freud also plays into that and we just believe that others also share our own experiences uh, and our behaviors okay um which is projection, which also could lead into that confirmation bias, right? All kind of um, tied in together. And then there's the theory management, the, sorry, the terror management theory. And this is where a theory of death related anxiety. And this is where you explore people's emotional behavioral responses to reminders of their impending deaths. When faced with a threatening world, people act to enhance their self-esteem and adhere to worldviews that answer questions about life's meaning. And that is what you need to know about terror management theory. And that's it. You would think, why does it have to be here? But it is. So that is all for this section. I'll see you guys later.